wow that's a lot of changes hey guys welcome back to the video today we're going to be looking at the exam changes for 2022 and the people who are sitting the 2022 exams for GCSEs such as me and we're going to really just break everything down and just look at exactly what's going on and what's changed because trust me a lot has changed if you've been keeping up with the news lately Okay, because of COVID and everything, these 2022 exams are going to be quite different because firstly, there's going to be a few changes to coursework and field work and that sort of stuff. They're also giving us support materials such as formula sheets and maths and physics. They are also giving us advanced information, which you've probably heard of quite recently. And of course, we have the option to drop a few topics in some subjects. So that's why you're probably studying less now because of these missing topics, such as in English literature, where you study one less thing. And the weirdest of all, you are getting your papers marked a bit more leniently. Well, according to the exam boards, they're going to be a bit more generous with their marking, which for me doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, I don't get how that's going to work because like, the only subjects I can see where they can mark you generously is um, essay-based subjects because they're a bit more biased. But yeah, apart from that, that's a bit like, it doesn't really make sense to me. So you can see this in a really nice puzzle piece like this, uh, having all the five specific things that are going to be changing in the 2022 exams. And yeah, let's go into a bit more depth about these and more specifically the advanced information which we've been given quite recently and how that's going to help us and how we should revise around this information. Okay, let's start off with maths. So in maths, they've given us a formula sheet and it is extremely useless in my opinion. The majority of the equations on there, well in fact actually all of the equations on there I know perfectly fine. and um, yeah, yeah, it's quite useless for me I don't really need it um, I can see why some people may need it but the majority of those equations are extremely easy to learn and it doesn't take too long and the advanced information that they've given for maths is also quite useless um, it's just a bunch of topics and what's going to appear in each of the papers but it doesn't really tell me that much I might as well just revise everything so that's what I'm going to do with maths I'm just going to continue how I normally do and um, the way I revise maths is by practice and practice makes perfect so for example a CGP workbook which is great in my opinion and um, yeah the more practice you do with maths the better you'll get uh, I made an entire video on how you can revise for maths and a bunch of websites and resources that can help you as well as this maths app right here as well as this maths app right here which uh, actually is really good for getting maths help for any of your questions and as you can see I am a volunteer so I'm a tutor in it as well and you can become a tutor on that app with the link below um, because yeah it's a really rewarding experience uh, it can help with your CV as well and yeah so that's basically everything for maths um, I also do further maths which is basically the same they've given us a formula sheet for further maths as well which is basically as useless as well um, I don't really find it that useful but um, yeah the advanced information is equally useless too so I'm just going to continue doing practice questions and yeah hopefully I should be fine okay normally in English literature you have four main sections so you have the play oh you also have the poems you also have the um, Shakespeare and lastly you have the novel which in our school we don't do so there's one specific thing that gets completely taken out for us it's a novel um, and some people take out poetry others take out the Shakespeare but yeah you still have to do unseen either way if you're taking out poetry that is the only difference they've made in the 2022 English literature exam everything else is the exact same for English language this is a QA by the way if you don't know what exam boards I'm doing they're all in the description below um, there is a slight advanced information for for the um, paper two and what they've told us is that the writing at the very end is going to be an article which sure is okay it's not the most useful thing but it's not that useless as well either and um, it does narrow down my revision a tiny tiny bit and it's also given us a few hints on what the source A and B are going to be which apparently um, the source A is a 21st century autobiographical writing and the source B is a 19th century essay what do I do with that like so 
so like how how does that help me I, I don't understand they've also given out advanced information for biology which if you look at you realize that they've removed so much information and it's actually like on the one hand it's like great because that's much less revision uh, much less work um, a lot of stuff is being taken out especially stuff like the eye um, which in my opinion is extremely difficult because uh, I always get the convex and the concave the wrong way around and the contracting and the relaxing and the suspensory ligaments and all of that stuff always I get it, it's all like it, it gets mixed up all the time so I'm happy that that's a chunk of my revision that I don't need to do anymore but at the same time all that hard work that I spent <sighs> to waste um, yeah Another part of biology that might be a bit annoying is the fact that your teachers will probably uh, make you still learn the topics. Um, uh, my teacher for biology isn't going to because like, if it's not in the exam there's no point and I suggest myself um, to not revise the topics that they clearly state won't be in the exam. Um, there are some topics that could come up as low tariff questions, if you don't know what that means it's like small mark questions and not like big marks, but I suggest looking over these topics but not spending a huge amount of your time actually focusing on these topics because it's just a waste of time. Um, yeah, only do that if you want to take it for A level, maybe put a bit more focus towards it, but apart from that um, it's not the most useful thing to do. Same goes with chemistry and physics and any other thing where they've taken up um, topics. Also so the fact that it tells you what required practicals will be assessed and which ones won't be is really really useful because you can literally just focus on those required practicals only and you don't need to look at the required practicals that they say won't be in the exam. It's just a waste of time. Don't waste your time, do something more fun with it instead. With chemistry, if you've seen the advanced information, it's actually just shocking how biology is over here on one side of the scales and then chemistry is over here on the other side of the scales and if you weigh up which once lost more topics biology would just go like that completely it's actually just shocking how they've only removed like one or two topics from the papers and in biology they've removed like half the specification and um, yeah so chemistry I'm probably going to keep the majority of my flashcards um, and also I'm disabling my flashcards rather than deleting them just in case because um, I don't want to see all that hard work just go um, but yeah so it's still going to be there but it's not going to come up into my queue so I'll always be able to look over them especially when I might get into A level I might need them. The only part I'm really going to find useful about the advanced information for chemistry is the required practicals because a lot of the required practicals in chemistry are really difficult to learn and there's a lot of information about them that I just don't care. Um, but yeah so now that I can focus on these specific required practicals I'm going to learn them in complete depth because if it says that they're going to be in the exam don't just skim over them, make sure you properly know them, like like they, they might give a really big six marker on them, so you need to really know it inside out. If you don't know how to do that, free science lessons is the go-to place, or you actually can find some other videos, I forgot the name of them, but they look like this, um, and they're really useful as well because they show you the required practical in action and how uh, it's supposed to be done in the classroom, and then you can really visualize it in your head much better. Now with physics, I'm actually quite annoyed uh, about the advanced information and exactly what topics have been taken out from the papers um, because a lot of the topics that have been taken out are topics that I personally like liked in physics and um, enjoyed them and I found them easy. They've taken those ones out but they've kept all these obnoxious really annoying topics and yeah uh, it's going to be quite annoying for me because now I'm going to have to disable all the flashcards that made sense to me mostly and I'm going to have to keep all the ones that are just stupid and don't really make much sense um, which is how I feel about physics mainly. Um, you probably have a completely different opinion maybe but um, yeah physics for me mostly doesn't make much sense in paper one they're keeping stuff like energy changes and conservation dissipation that makes a lot of sense for me but the particle model stuff and internal energy and energy transfers I don't know it's just really annoying I hate them um, it's like extremely boring and it just never clicks for me but the electricity stuff I actually really liked and the atoms and isotopes was like chemistry basically nuclear fission and fusion and all the radioactive stuff 
that I'm so sad to go. Like those were three marks for me. I love those topics a lot, and the fact that they're gone is like really depressing for me. Um, with paper two, um, this is higher by the way. Um, they've removed a lot of the annoying topics, which I'm happy about. Um, so there's no moments in there. Moments uh, were really annoying. Same with black body radiation, electromagnetism, and stuff like that. Um, I'm happy that all of those are gone. So paper two, I don't have much of a problem with. Um, but paper one, they've removed a lot of the nice topics, which is going to be annoying for me, especially when I'm revising, I'm going to have all these really difficult questions to be going over, so yeah. I don't really want to go over the other subjects such as French and RS and DT because some people are taking and some aren't, and geography and stuff because you can just check the advanced information, it's like it's really similar, um, for geography at least, um, they aren't giving advanced information because they've removed so many topics, it's actually insane. Um, yeah, so that's really useful. Um, but for all the other subjects that I'm doing, they've given advanced information and yeah, it's okay. I don't really find much use in the advanced information for all these other subjects such as DT. Um, it's quite broad and vague, but yeah, so it should hopefully be useful. But um, in a general perspective, I would say that Advanced information is definitely good because you are narrowing down your revision and, and it's just really useful when you're coming closer to your revision and you need to just focus on those specific aspects of what's going to come up in your exam and it just means that you don't have to revise as much now as well. But one really big problem I have with this now is that you can't practice past papers anymore because there's going to be some topics that aren't going to be in the GCSEs for the 2022 exams and you're going to have to skip them or just do them anyways and it's going to just get all jumbled up and my entire past papers tally is now like useless because you can't really practice past papers so I'm probably going to instead of practicing past papers just stick to practicing like topic past papers if like if that makes sense like on PMT they have these past papers of just a specific topic and um, yeah just doing questions on that topic again and again and again and do everything separately like that because that's the only way I can really arise this now um, and yeah I might push my revision a bit as well um, because I've got much less revision now compared to how much I normally would have had to do so I'll probably actually start revising in April rather than in March um, but yeah so that is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed, uh, make sure you subscribe and do this, this and this and before you go try this maths question and see if you can do it, it's for um, edXL uh, higher but you can probably do it as well if it's just normal AQA or other exam boards but yeah try it out, if you can't do it make sure you go over the topic and yeah I'll see you again next time, bye.